Welcome to the fastest staff in town. Today we're going to start this Ksuvah staff Ayn Ches. We are going to begin on the very top of Ayn Ches, Amad Aleph, by the new parak, the new Mishnah. So this is referring to when a woman receives her Nechse Malug, in which generally what happens is she has rights to the land. However, the husband eats the peros, the fruits, in her lifetime. So the question is, when did she get it? So the Mishnah says as follows. Let's say a woman received as a inheritance, nixim malog, some land, and adshlo tis ares. Now, what happened was, she had already owned this land from the time before she was even engaged. However, says Rashi, venis arsa, and now she's engaged. So the question is, does she have a right to sell this land because she had it all to herself even before the engagement? So Rashi says that Beishamai and Beishil agree that she's allowed to sell it even though now she is engaged. But since she received it from before the engagement, then it's allowed. Now Beishamai who says that she could sell it, Rashi says, as long as she still only have the heiress in stage. Let's say, again, even though she had the land from before, before even the engagement, but she gets engaged, has heiress in, and has Nesuin, so in that situation, we're going to see that it's not the same din, that not everyone's going to agree that she has the right to sell it. So now let's look at the second case. Nafula mission is Arsa. Now, again, she got the land after Arison, and she also sold it at that same time, in that same same block. So just like the first case of her Mishnah, where she received, she sold it at the same time of Arison, but the ratio of our Mishnah is when she had it already from before the engagement. Here she actually got it only after the Arison. So Beishami Omrim Timchor. So Beishami says you could sell it there. Beishil Omrim Lulo Timchor. So you actually have a Machlokas. And we'll see the reason why Beishil says in this case she should not have the right to sell this land. But in this situation, even though Beishil said in the ratio that she could sell it, that's because she had it from before the Arison. But here, since she acquired it at the time of the Arison, so the din is, according to Beis Hill, that she cannot sell it. However, which makes it even more difficult to understand Beis Hillel. Beis Hillel says that she shouldn't sell it, but if she did, the evidence good. Oh, we'll have to understand why, why he says that. Omer of Yehuda. So Omer Chachamim of Nei Rebbe Gamil. So they posed this thought in front of Rebbe Gamil. They said, Hoyel B'Zacha B'Isha it's hard to understand. If he's Zoycha in the wife, now she's engaged to her, they've done Arison, shouldn't he have a right also to be able to have this land? So Rashi says, So exactly what is this statement going on? Is it going on? Beishamai's statement that L'chadchil, she could sell it, what right does she have to sell it? Or, according to Beis Hillel, that Bidyevit, if she sold it, it's a good sale. Why should it be a good sale? Well, Chayra, again, sh- uh, she should um, perhaps not be able to sell this. So, Gemara says, Mishnah says, Armohen al hachadashim onu boishim, el shiatim igalgalim aleinu asayashanim. So, on the original part, where where we're going to see Shinnafalam Mishinises, that she received it after Nesuin, we're embarrassed. Ma ro chachamim loimer, that the chachamim said, imachar v'nasta habal moismen al kuchais. We're going to see later on our Mishnah, um, that once she received it after she was completely married, and she decides to sell it at that point after Nesuin, that the husband has a right to, to take it from the kuchos. So, we're saying that, or it's embarrassing. She should be able to sell it, but the chachamim allow the husband to take it from the kuchos. But by kedushin, by the erison, they wouldn't go so far to say such a thing. So they're not going to be megagolin or say yishanim. 
even though it's true, when it comes to Nesuin, the Chachamim do say that if she would sell it at the time of Nesuin, that the din is that the husband can take it back from these purchasers, but we're not going to go that far and to say that she doesn't have a right to sell it at the time of Arison. Again, at least Bidyevid, if it was done by according to Beis Hillel, that it's a good sale. And then the Mishnah says, Nafula Mishinises, this is what we just said before, let's say she only inherited this after Nisuin, as we said, what happened? She got it at the time of Nisuin, after Nisuin, and she sold it, obviously, at that point. So in that situation, even though we're embarrassed by that, nonetheless, that's the din that the husband can get it back. Now, how about in a situation where she received it before Nisuin, and Rashi says, so she acquired this Nechse Malug before. However, Venises, and she sold it at the time of Nesuin. So it's not that she acquired it in Nesuin and sold it in Nesuin. So that everyone holds that the husband could, could get the land back. However, in this case, because she at least received it, before the suin, maybe the din's different. Rav Gil Oimer, he says it's a good sale. So Omer Rav Chanina Bar Kavya, you say it's a good sale, and therefore the husband can't get it back. The husband should get it back there too. Again, when it was sold after the suin, we're not very happy to say this, but the din is that, yes, the husband will get it back. However, if it was given to her before Nisuin, and then she decides to sell it after Nisuin, so he says that it's a good sale. Rav Shimon disagrees between one type of possessions and others. Nechasim hayadu and labal. When it comes to Nechasim, which the husband knows about, Lutimchor, she did not sell the imachor v'nasna bottle. However, and if she did sell it, because he knew about the, the land before, it's bottle. Shani Yudu Nabal, if the husband didn't know about it, then Lutim Harvi Machov Nasna Kayim. So we're gonna see what exactly this is referring to, but we're making he makes a distinction whether the husband knows about this property, whether or not it was a good sale or the, or it is bottle. That we'll see later on in the Gemara. So now let's start off first with the Gemara's question. Maishna Resha. The low plegi, my shnah safe in the plegi. How come in the very beginning of our Mishnah, where it said that she received the nixi malug beforehand, before she was engaged, and then she ends up selling it at the time of Arison, that Beis Hillel says it's fine, it's a it's a good sale. However, the Seifa, Beis Hillel says, no, that's not the case. Um, because since she received it only at the time of Arison, so now if she sold it at the time of Arison, maybe it's not a good sale. So what's the difference? So I'm going to be Rav Yana Reisha, in the beginning where she received it before she was even married, it fell under her schus, namely while she was a penuya. So the husband had no connection to this property. She received this property and she was just a single girl. Seva, where she had Kedushin, is B'schuso Naflu. It fell already when she was engaged to this man. So in B'schuso Naflu, so one second. If it's true that we say it's in his Chos, then Ki Machor Venosna Maikayim. So why does Beis Hill say that if it was done, but it works? It shouldn't work at all. Ella Reisha Vadi B'schuso Naflu. Obviously in the Reisha, because she was a Penuya, it fell under her hands. Seifa, where it was the time of Arison, Amr B'schusa, Amr B'schusai, it's not so clear exactly who the schus is at this point because they're connected to one another. After all, there there's a doubt whether or not Nisun will end up taking place. Maybe it will not take place. So if it, let's say they break off the engagement, so then he's not going to have any rights to this land. So therefore, because of this doubt, L'chathil will timchor. At this stage, we don't want her to sell it. However, but if she does sell it, then it is fine. Okay. So, 
So iboilhu, Rabbi Huda al o adiyavad. And so what the question we posed before, they said, why should it be that the sale would work in the case of she received it, and like in the case of the Mishnah, before it was um, she was engaged, and then but she sold it at the time of Arison. Lachar, that should be enough that it should not be a good sale because the husband should have a schus in it. So the question is, was, was this question posed to Beis Shammai that says even Luchat Chilah can be sold? Or was this question posed to Beis Hillel that Bidiyevit works? So who was he asking this question toward? So this is what the Gemara asks again. Iboil hu. Rabbi hu do Luchat Chilah o Adiyavad. So as we continue to Ayin Chesam at Beis, the Gemara says as follows. Toshma. The Sanya. Om Rabbi Huda. Om Rulifne Rabbi Gamil. So it was posed to him. So in both cases, whether we're dealing with a suin or erison, so zu machor bottle of zu machor bottle. So in that case, by nesuin, if let's say she got it in nesuin and sold it in nesuin, it's bottle. We should say also here that as Rashi says, shenafula kashia rusa he machor bottle. If she got it in the time of erison, it should also be bottle. So amohen al chadashim anu baishin. We're embarrassed about the Chadashim, which again we said was a case where it was sold uh, at the time of Nesuin, that is, he has a right to take it back. That even now, when it comes to her selling it at the time of Arison, so that's we're not, that far we're not going to go. But Shvamina, the Avid Karmar Shvamina, it must be that this is uh, talking about Lathi the Shita Beis Hillel. That bidi evid it works, says Rashi. Midi kamrile af zu machor bottle shmamina di evid nami kashlehu. It should say that it doesn't work at all. No, it's even after the fact. That even after the fact, the mechira should be bottle. So obviously, the question is not just being posed toward beis shama lechatchil. It's even bidi evid it shouldn't be good. So therefore, the question was really posed toward beis hillel. Tanya Omer of Chanina ben Akavia. This is not really the way that the Chachamim uh, received this answer from Rabbi Gamil. If you want to tell me when it comes to Nesuin, when she sells it at that time, that we say the husband can take it back. That's because at the time of the suin, the husband has all these different rights. He has rights to her found objects, her work, her, and un, annulling her vows. So Tomer Barusa Shin Balazaka Loba Matsyasa Loba Masya Deha Loba Farsna Dereha. You're asking a question about why should it work by Arison, but he doesn't have the same rights uh, as he does at the time of the suin. So I can understand by the suin, we're going to say that he can take it from the Lukuchos. But why would we think that that should automatically assume that the same din should be by Arison? So Amru Lo, Rebbe, Machra, some remove the word, La, Ajla, Nisei. So let's see, she sold it before she got married. Nisei, Sveracha, Nisei, Sveracha, Kach, Machra, Mahu. If she sold it, uh, she got married and then she sold it, what's the din? The truth is, I hold that after, even though it was at Nesuin and she sold it after Nesuin, it's still a good sale. So, so she received it when they're engaged, but she only sold it while she was fully married. So how could this Mechira be Kayim if he has all the rights? So how are you saying... Oh, don't compare the Arison to the Suin, but you yourself hold that if she would sell it after the Suin, that it would still be a good sale. So that's how he's responding that I am uh, embarrassed about this din that if she would have received it in the time of the Suin and she would sell it at the Suin, then even though Meikar Din, she should be able to sell it, but we're going to say that. Um, we're going to say that the husband has a right to take take it away, take take this land away. But I'm not going to go so far that if, let's say, she received it before, but she, even though she sells that in the suin, I'm not going to have it taken away. But none to none. But we learned. Let's say she got it before 
Nisuan, and then she got married and sold it then. Right? So it sounds like it's only a Bidievid situation. So that she could actually do it even so it's actually um, a machlokus whether or not he holds that it's a din or b'diavet. So you're telling me he holds like b'shamai that he holds it works even l'chadchila. That he just holds like they don't argue regarding this topic. Whether or not the Nechassim, the Nixay Malug, fell to her before Arison, or happened after Arison that she received it, and she got married and then sold it then, so according to this opinion, he says that even though she would have received it even before Arison, but the fact that she waited until after Nesuin to sell it, then the husband has rights to it and therefore he can take it back. So come on. Who's that like? The look Rabbi Huda, it's not like Rabbi Huda who says that even Bidiev, at least Bidyevit it's a sale. And certainly the look Rabbi Hanina ben Akavya, because he holds even the Khatkhil it's a sale. So in who the Amri Karabosenu, he will hold like the Rabosenu, the Sandra Bosenu, Khosha Vinimnu, Bain Shinafu Wachal Nis Tisaris, Bain Shinafu Mishnis Arsa Vinises, Habal Moitza Medal Kuchli. So there is this opinion that during this time frame, if she received it before Arison, but then she only sold it after Nisuin. So again, it's either it's a Lacham Chilat's a sale, Bidiyavit it's a sale, or according to the Rabbi Seinu, the husband could take take it back. Okay. Weiter. Mishani says, Elov Elo Moidim. So he said that once, again, she's married, and let's say she gets married, and it was also sold at the time of marriage. So then everyone holds the husband can take it back. So Lema Tanina Watakanas Usha. Why don't we say this is similar to the statement of Takanas Usha? What is that? Diamrav Yoisra Khanina, but Usha Hiskinu, and we saw in the Daf Nun, Memtas Nun, a lot of Takanas Usha, Haisha Shamakum Niximalug, Bahai Bala. Let's say you have a woman that sold her Niximalug while her husband was alive. Even though, again, normally the husband, is, the whole point is the husband normally has rights to the Peros, it, but she sold it, and now she died. Now, according to Tekanus Usha, they say that uh, we allow the husband to be able to get this to get this back. So, this doesn't seem to be any different than what Tekanus Usha is. Our Mishnah is also saying that if she sells it, after Nisuin, that the husband gets it back. And over here it says that also she'll get he'll get it back. So Gemara says that there's actually a couple distinctions. Masnisin peros. Our Mishnah is saying that the husband is able to get it back even while she's alive, when she sells it. She's allowed he's allowed to say that no, this wasn't a sale, says Rashi. habal peros The husband's allowed to eat the fruits. Not the, he's not going to eat the land. He's not going to get the land that still belongs to his wife. But he can say the sale is not a valid sale, and he can get the land back so he can eat the fruits while his wife is alive. It says Rashi Moisa. However, after she dies, Yasser Karkalo Keach, then the land goes back to the to the person she sold it to. It's just because we want him while she is alive to be able to eat the fruits. But after she's already died, then in fact the sale goes back to the way it was originally. They feel a mesa um even if though she dies in his lifetime, will your shena habal. The husband's not going to be yarshit. He's not considered to be a person who's going to inherit this land. So what does Usha do? Says the Gemara. Usha begufa shel karka lachemisa. So be also be Usha v'tikun dirfil gufa shel karka yarishabal. So the tremendous chiddush of Usha is that not only does he get the right to the land back, so he can eat the fruits while she's alive, but even after she dies, which normally you would say that the land goes back to the person she sold it to. But at this point, we say no. He's considered to be like the Lokech Rishon. He's like the first purchaser, and therefore he has the rights to be able to get this um, this land even after she has died. Which is question 
five. Medina de Masnisin moitzi rak la peris bechayeho, but the kanas usha moitzi gufa shokar kaviafu yachar misa. Okay. Weiter. Rav Shimon Choylik Bein Nechassim, so he makes a distinction between possessions, lands that he knew about, lands that he didn't know about. So the Gemara says as follows, Elohim Yodin Ve'elohim Sheinah Yodun. These are the lands that were known, this is what's not known. Om Rav Yosef Rav Chanina, Yodun Mekarke, when it comes to things that are known, has to do with Karka, things which are land. So land is something in which is known about, says Rashi. And he married her knowing that she had this land. Therefore, the sale is no good. Because then she, he was anticipating that this land was going to be connected to her. However, when it's something which is not known, that's something which is like metaltolin, and therefore, if she would sell metaltolin, then in fact it would be a sale. Even if it's metal, and that could be something that he knew about. If let's say she's here, and then the chasim come from another country. So that is something which is shenyaduin, something which is totally not even thought about. Says Rashi. Okay, there's no Rashi in this. We're going to stop there. Let's look at question six. So either it's the Taltalin or it's possibly what she's sitting here. Let's see if there's any other questions. TA2. Isha Shanafal and the Arsa. So let's say she received possessions before uh Mission Arsa after Arison. The question is why does Bas Hill say Lakhili should not do it, but Bidyevid you could. So this is what the Gemara says over here. This is T A two that Rasha is vade b'schusa na for seifa emer b'schusa emer b'schuso v'chadchi lo timchay marcher v'nas dekayim. And Rashi over here explains because hoyel v'zocha b'isha. Um, let's see this Rashi emer b'schusoi. The eris and oisa suffik nesuin shema tavli di nesuin shema lo tavli. So you don't necessarily know what's going to end up happening. Erisin havi suffik i beschus anafla o beschus soi nafla. The erisin oisa suffik nesuin shemulo tavo lakach. That's what Rashi said. Okay. TB3. Ma bain te kanas usha la dinna ha mishna ba usha shemacha menechsim lug. Acha shenises bal moisim ad lakuchos. So this is exactly the same question that we said before. That our mission is only talking about the possessions that he can get back the land so he can have the fruit in her lifetime. However, um, the Takana of Usha extends it that even after she has died, he gets the Gufshil Karka. Atkan.